Welcome to my Minecraft Bedrock 1.14 Ray Farm tutorial. And you just saw that we just got Bad Omen. And everything you need to know about this farm, you're going to learn in the next two minutes. Watch as the Ray Bar fills up. And watch how it instantly clicks to the next wave. We are instantly killing the waves. Now, the Raiders are still up there, and they're about to slowly start trickling down. But we've tricked the game into spawning the next wave. Blow, that's our outpost spawning spots. This one in particular has four HSAs. So it has four HSSs. And we'll get into that later. What you do if you have four. What you do if you only have two. What you, only, what you do if you only have one. Now this is a direct replacement for my cyan raid farm. And technically that farm still works. So if you built that farm, then congratulations. You don't need to build this one. However... People with a single HSA were affected by many of the bugs of 1.14.1. So this form is for them and for anyone else that is trying to build a new form. And I need to give a special shout out to Yodolf. Because when I developed the insta-kill raid form, I was dumping them down. And he figured out that you could dump them up. So a big shout out to him. Go check out his channel. Link will be in the description. And as soon as this raid is over, in the next, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, we will get into how to build it. And it doesn't matter the speed that this Trident Killer kills. Because as far as the game is concerned, that wave is already gone. So kill them fast, kill them slow. Don't kill them at all. You can just stack these pillagers up. There you go. Two minutes and four seconds on the raid. Alright. Let's get into it. Alright. First things first. You're going to need an outpost. Any outpost will do. I chose this one in particular for a few reasons. One, already had it in my save files. Two, it is a four HSA outpost, meaning that it has four hard-coded spawn areas. And within each one of those hard-coded spawn areas, you'll have an HSS or hard-coded spawn spot. Now, this simply means that this outpost has crossed this chunk boundary on both the south and the east side. That's east and that's south, thus giving us four HSAs. Now, if you have more questions about that, please check out my structure spawn mechanics video or my multiple outpost spawn position video. You can find both of them on my channel if you have any more questions about outposts and the HSA and the HSS. Now with that said, we need a measurement from this outpost. Come to the top of your outpost, write down the middle number in your coordinates. That's your Y value. Ours is 84, we need to keep that in mind. Because pillagers will only spawn three spots below the roof to a maximum of 81 in our case. In your case, it will be whatever the top of your outpost says, minus three. And then the next step is tear down your outpost. Burn it down, tear it down. I don't care what you do with it. Technically, you could leave it. I think it looks worse if you do. But technically, you could leave this outpost and just modify it slightly. I don't recommend that. I think it looks terrible, but you do you. So tear it down. Now that you have it torn down, you need to find the, once again, the south and the east. And you need to, in my case, I need to extend two blocks on each side of the outpost to the south and to the east. And that is so that we can find if we have multiple spawn spots. I already know that I do, but you may not know. So I'm going to show you how to test for multiple slides. Okay, now that that's done, you'll need something like a glass pane. Put you a temporary block. And what I want you to do is, I want you to cover the outpost with glass panes. It doesn't have to be the whole entire outpost. 
you need to start in two blocks from the southeast corner. Gather as much of it as you can. Now, if you want to do this in creative, that's a great idea. This way you don't waste glass or iron bars or whatever. Now that you have it completed, it should look something like this. Now you don't have to go to the absolute edge of the outpost. You just need to do, let's say, three-fourths of it. Because you're never going to have them spawn to the north side or the west side. So essentially, these last couple of rows are worthless also. But you need to back up 24 to 54 blocks. And it doesn't matter if it's nighttime. It doesn't matter if it's daytime you will start seeing them swan. Okay, we have our first set of pillagers. Now keep in mind that mobs spawn on the northwest corner of the block, meaning that they spawned here. So this is actually going to be your spawn spot right here. Let's get us a sword so we can kill this guy. No, that's one of our spawn slots located. There's some trial and error in this. It takes a little while to do. Once again, northwest corner. So it's going to be this spot right here. Yes, yes, we got bad omen. Now, I'm removing those down below the actual spawn so that nothing spawns there. I'm eliminating any spawnable blocks within the bounding box of the outpost. Fantastic. Once again, northwest corner. And automatically, because you have one to the east and one to the south, you're going to have one to the southeast. So I'm just going ahead and mark it. There's no need for us to waste time waiting on it. Now that you have that done, remove all of the glass panes. And because we know that we have our outpost in four chunks, we need to do some general housekeeping now. Because this outpost has a lot of problems, meaning that it has water here, we need to cover this water up. Because the top block needs to be a solid block. Not water, not glass, not leaves. If you have trees in these four chunks, you need to cut them down. You need to eliminate leaves, you need to eliminate slabs, farmland, water of any kind, glass blocks. We need to eliminate these problem blocks because of the bugs from 1.14 and 1.14.1. .1. So, once we have that completed, we'll jump right back to this. Alright, now that you have that completed, you'll notice that I filled in all the water. I didn't actually fill it in. I just put a block above it. Now that actually filled in. The ravines are not filled in. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is every chunk that this outpost is in, and yours actually may only be in one chunk. If this outpost was shifted one block to the northwest, it would only be in one chunk. And that's the case for a lot of people, which is why I'm doing this tutorial. So if your outpost is in, in multiple chunks, you don't need to smooth out such a large area. Or if you don't plan on using all of those spots. If you don't plan on using those spots, just leave them dug down like that, and that way pillagers won't spawn in them. However, we are planning on using all these spots. 
because the more spots, the faster the pillagers will spawn. Now, remember our number from earlier from the outpost was 81. And that's because our outpost was 84. So build each one of these up to 81. that they're all okay now what you're going to do is you're going to go one two three four four blocks out one two three four one two three four one two three four now i'm only going to show you how to do this one time and then you just do it for however many spots you have you're going to need to take a block and you're going to go to the northwest you're going to build them all to the north and to the west just like that and then come around like this. It's that simple. Pull out your observer. And once again, this is a Trinit Killer by Navy Nexus. He has many Trinit Killers. Some of them are way better than this one. This is an old design. However, it's the one I like the best. He has a new one that's fantastic. I just saw the video for it. I totally recommend you use that one instead of this one. But this is his design, and I wanted to properly credit him because that's what you do. So one, two, three. Now there's a lot of hot debate about whether more equals better. I say that it does not. Build a two-high wall exactly like this. Now this can be glass if you want it to be, or it can be a solid block. I prefer solid block because of all of the issues that glass have in 1.14 and 1.14.1. Now, the block that will have to be glass is that one, or it can be leaves. It doesn't matter if it's leaves or glass because that is your instant push block. And there's no way around it. You can't substitute it for something else. It needs to be block. It needs to be glass or leaves, and it won't affect your spawning at all. We're talking about one block out of 256 blocks for a chunk. So you're talking about a one out of 256 decrease in performance, but there's no other way around it. So build it exactly like that. Now this trident killer is complete. Build the other three exactly like that. All right, once you have it built, it should look something like this. Put your small platform between them. Builds you a way to get up and down. Let's test it out. Notice that pillagers are spawning. They're being instant pushed into the Trinit Killers. Seems like it works. There you go, we just got Bad Omen. So everything here is in working order. Now let's shut this off so that we don't have to hear it while we work on the rest of the farm. Now, the Cyan Raid farm had a fatal, a fatal flaw in it. And that flaw was that water covered this chunk. And, like I said, that was only a problem if you had a single HSA. So, if you had a single HSA, that means you only had this Trident Killer. So, if the farm covered the water, you would get no hostile mob spawns. So, if you watch my video about structure spawn mechanics, you would know if you don't get hostile mob spawns, you don't get structure mob spawns. So, we are actually going to move... Our raid farm into the adjoining chunk. Now, if you don't know how to find your chunk borders and you don't play on Windows 10 and don't have a chunk resource pack like I do, get rid of these particles. If you don't have a chunk resource pack like I do, I'm going to leave a link in the description for a slime chunk finder. It was by Foe the OG, and I'll leave the link in the description. Or you can watch a video by Navy Nexus where he describes how to find chunk borders. In his in his video, 
I'll leave a link to his channel. You can find that along with his Shrine Killers. I totally recommend you check out his channel. Now with that said, we need to start our farm here in the middle. Let's actually turn these back on because I want to show you something. I want to show you how to measure out how tall to make your farm. Now, I know how tall it is for this one, but you need to just go up and up and up and up and up until you no longer get kills in all of your Now we need to watch for new kills in those farthest two. Notice that nothing is spawning in them. Nothing is spawning in any of them because we're too far away. There is a sphere of between 24 and 54 blocks surrounding the HSSs, the hard-coded spawn spots. So we need to be within that sphere. So I recommend that you go up too high so that you can come back down until you start seeing spawns inside of your trident killers. Now, notice that we started getting spawns in the front two. Gonna just drink a little milk here. Get rid of that. We're still not getting spawns in the back. Do you see that? This is how you measure it out. Like I said, yours will be different than mine. Okay. You see that? We're starting to get spawns in the back. Let's go down one more. Now we're getting spawns in both of the back spots. That's what we needed to see. All right, now that we have the, the height determined, we should actually move it down one more. It's actually approximately 41 blocks above. Now, once you have that determined, we should actually start building the trident killers. Oops. Okay, that will be the base of, of our trident killer right there. Everything from here on out should be glass only. Glass leaves or that's it. I mean, uh, leaves are scaffolding, not glass. Sorry. Put your observers down like so. Once again, Navy Nexus is a design. Despite rumors to the contrary. Let's turn it off so we don't have to hear it. Come in with a little bit of glass. Okay, now that we have that, we need to actually build a collection system. We're done with those parts. Put your chest throughout that. Now we need a block to stand on out here. These are all temporary blocks. They are just for us to stand on. Just like that. Rails. So that our minecarts don't fall off. Just like so. 
get rid of that. Now, how you do the collection system from here is your choice. You can do item filters. You can just do chests and hoppers all the way down, which is what I will probably be doing because I'm a simple person and I don't mess around with a lot of redstone. A lot of people just do filters and collect the emeralds and dump the rest in the lava. That is certainly an option, and I do that occasionally. But I recommend chests and hoppers all the way down so you collect all the drops. And believe me, you will need plenty of chests and hoppers. Now, take note of your Y value here, 122. So we need to go up to 142. We need to go up 20 blocks. Once you've got to 142, take out a couple of signs, actually four signs. And just place down a couple of water buckets. Get rid of your water buckets. Now, all of this glass can actually be solid block. You don't actually have to do it. And you don't actually have to do the corners. So, let's take those out just to save blocks. However, if you don't do those corners, you need to not do them all the way up. That will save you a ton of blocks. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what about Ravagers? They'll clip through if you don't do the corners. Well, that's fine because we're not going to have Ravagers. We're going to kill the Ravagers with lava because we don't need all those saddles. So, remember that you're at 122 here. We need to add 12 to that because that will be the height of our villager. So it will be 134. So plus 12 from here will give us 134. And then from 134, we need to think about 80 blocks up. So 134 will be actually 214. So we need to extend this up to 214. Now that we're at 214, we're up 80 blocks from where our lower villager will be. We'll add the villagers later and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Now that we're at 214, we need to think about which direction we want our farm to go into. And I want it to go this way. I want it to go away from our outpost. So add that block right there, then go out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Connect these like this. Okay, we'll fill that in in just a minute. I'm going to show you the whole entire build and then we'll fill it all in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 And we'll do that one more time. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we don't want any part of our water stream to be into our outpost chunks. Which is why we decided to do it this way. Notice that the chunk boundary is approximately here. And these are the chunks that our outpost is in. And these are the chunks that our water streams will be in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven.
Now, in addition to filling in each one of these platforms, I need a three high wall. One, two, three with the leaf block all the way around. So as soon as we're done with that, we'll come right back to this. All right, once completed, it should look something like this. Notice that we have our three high wall right there. Come in and add this. This will be for the water flow later. Come in, put a sign here, a sign here, a sign here, and a bucket of lava. And that will be for the killing the ravagers. Now we are not ready to add the water yet, so let's let's forget about that. What we are ready to do is talk about adding villagers. Now, once you have the platform completed, we're ready to add the villagers, and we're almost done. We add the villagers, we add the water, and we're done. This form will be complete. So come right here from your post, from your scaffolding, and mark out 15 blocks two three these are temporary blocks so it doesn't matter what kind four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and on the fifteenth block we're going to play soul sand i told you those were temporary blocks what you're going to need to do is come in and build four sides just like that break out your signs Put two signs. And what this is, is going to be for your villagers. We are simply going to build a way to transport our villagers up to the top. Now you will need two villagers. They will need to be adult villagers because baby villagers have a tendency to glitch out. Now get your scaffolding and build it up like that. And what you're going to need to do is get buckets of water or ice blocks or whatever. But we're going to need to make a bubble column. Now you're going to keep building this up just like this. Add a water layer all the way up to the platform. Now once you have your bubble column to here, what we need to do is come up an additional four blocks. One, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. Okay. Now you want to come out a block like this. And we'll, we'll surround it with leaves like that. Finish filling in this bubble column. Now, I recommend that you build a two high wall like this. I recommend that you give him somewhere to go so that he can find the bed. Now, once it's nighttime, We're going to send our villager up. Normally I don't show this part. I tell you to figure out how to get your own villagers up here. But this time I'm going to show this because this is going to be the last raid form I make for a while. Notice that he went straight up the bubble column and you can too. He will link to his bed and get in it. Look how well that worked out. One, two, let's see, two, three. One, two, three, 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 like these, one, two, three. And then, of course, cover him up. These have to be leaves, otherwise, raiders will spawn on them. Now we'll want to come in and we want to break this off. It doesn't have to be taken all the way to the 
to the ground, but it does have to be broken to at least below here. Break those off, break this off, break this off, and keep breaking your bubble column. Now we can leave it at that point right there. At which point you can come in and add the water. I recommend an infinite water source, but you do you. This will push all of our pillagers to here. They will fall down. The ravagers will get burned by the lava. Easy peasy. Now the top part of this is complete. We need to remember our platform height. It's 122. So we need to be within 12 blocks vertically of our bottom villager. So no higher than 134. Let's turn it back to daytime so that we can see. Okay, oops, I meant to do that with solid blocks. Okay. Let's actually get us a night vision potion so you guys can see. Put a bed right here. Now we're gonna, this will be very delicate to do because this is a water bubble column. You should go in and place one there, one here, one here, like that. And please don't let it knock you off because it will. There you go, like that. Our bottom villager is ready to be sent up. Get in the water column, buddy. You can follow him right on up. Now, if it's lucky enough for you to be night like it is for me, he will link to his bed. Come on, buddy, get in your bed. You know you want to get in your bed there you go now you can leave this water column here if that's what you choose to do or you can tear it down I'm gonna leave it for right now it won't affect anything however if you do choose to leave it please don't leave these openings like this please make sure that you secure it all just exactly like that with that said whoops break all those blocks under his bed which is why you don't want baby villagers because when they grow up, they will glitch out. If you so choose so, you can clean up all this mess. Or leave it, doesn't really matter. Let's kill all these pillagers. And I did that simply because I don't want bad omen the second I'm right here. Let's go up to our platform. Turn this right killer on. And success. Do you see how fast that's working? Now if you have any questions or comments, if you think I did something wrong, if you think I'm stupid, please leave it in the comments. I'll answer your questions. If you have Anything positive you'd like to say or negative you'd like to say, just leave it in the comments. I will try to be better about answering them. If you are looking for a overworld guardian form, I suggest you check out Dr. Jan Cyan. Link in the description. 
he's working on one currently. Should be out in the next couple of days. I don't have an exact timeline for that, so who knows. But I suspect it'll be the next couple of days. I've seen it. It's fantastic. Incredible. If you're looking for flying machines or world leaders, check out Zundupchev. He's in the description also. He's building incredible flying machines, world leaders. Check it out. If you want to find me on Discord, you can find me in, in AA Realm, Advanced Automation, or you can find me on TechRock. I'm a member there also. Links, of course, will be in the description. You can also find me hanging out in Navy Nexus's Discord. Link for that will also be in the description, along with a few other cool people that I think that they do cool stuff, so check them out also. Thank you for watching.